everyone. I'm Ruthie Fierberg, and I am so thrilled to welcome you to the 10th annual Roger Reese Awards, celebrating outstanding achievement and performance by students throughout New York. It is so thrilling to be here. We have a night of incredible artistry ahead. But before we do, we are going to have a little red carpet of sorts where we introduce the people who have made these awards possible, um, performers that you know from Broadway and beyond, the man himself who knows Roger Reese the best, and many, many more. So I am so excited that the next 30 minutes is going to be a cheers to the Roger Reese Awards as we continue to support arts education. Um, during the webcast, do not forget, you can donate to the Roger Reese Awards through the Broadway Education Alliance at BEAlliance.org. And now to kick things off before our lineup of special guests, a little bit of song and dance from the 2019 Roger Reese Awards. Guys, hi Traylon, hi Cody. Hi Ruthie. So hey. So able to see your faces. Same. Yeah. I am so excited to be here. I was lucky enough to host the pre-show of the Roger Reese Awards in person last year, and the fact that we're able to do this all online, thanks to Broadway On Demand, is just so exciting. And I love that number. That's such a great homage to Roger and, of course, Rick, who wrote Jersey Boys. It's kind of this perfect merger. Yeah, it was so exciting to just see a bunch of people together in one space again. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, we can dream. Um, Cody, you are this year's executive producer of the Roger Reese Awards special. And I have to imagine that it was a lot of heavy lifting compared to other years when we are all in the same room. What went into the making of a digital presentation? You know, there was a, a good deal of pre-pro planning it out. And then after that, I'd say there were probably a hundred Zoom records a thousand different self tapes from the students and maybe like 10 well-placed sneaky behind the scenes sort of parents shooting shots. Oh my uh, God. And that's like, that's how we crafted this involved. special. Yeah. 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 We can get the families in. Yeah. I mean, did you find yourself giving a whole new lesson in arts education that this part of producing your own video, because we sometimes forget that, you know, the, the film part of theater has to, and the technology part of theater has to happen too. Yeah, you know, one of the really cool things that happens with the Rodgeries every year is they work with coaches to um, really coach themselves through the, the material. And we found that this year, part of that coaching process was really learning how to self-tape yourself, you know, to, to really curate that sort of performance, but in a frame, uh, via your phone, computer, or camera. So yeah, that, that was a big part of it this year. And Traylon, you know, Broadway On Demand is such a new enterprise. We're so excited it is in the sphere. Tell us a little bit more about the mission behind Broadway On Demand in general. Absolutely. We This whole venture actually started out of that moment when all of these organizations around the country were saying, we're not gonna be able to have an audience, can we please stream our show? And that was the first thought. And we thought, where are they going to do that? How are they going to do that? How can we help them? And so that was the impetus to start building what has become now Broadway On Demand. Um, and from there, of course, it's been gone a million different other directions at the same time as well with Broadway shows and original programming and educational initiatives. But at its heart, the idea was really to create a platform where theaters could really break down the walls of their space and share their message around the world. And I love that it's not just about streaming Broadway, that it is about streaming theater at every level, including something like the Roger Reese Awards. Why is it so important to you guys to make sure you run that full gamut and specifically support theater education? 
We believe in Broadway as um, an aspirational brand and not just a block of seven blocks in New York. Um, I think ever, all of us growing up, wherever we were, had a sense of like what Broadway was, what Broadway means. Mm-hmm. And so the idea that everybody could start sharing what they're creating um, from every level and that people around the world could participate, that that's Broadway too. It's not, you know, the, the cherished Broadway that we know of, but um, but that was right from the beginning. We wanted everybody to give everybody an equal platform to share the work that they were making. I completely agree. And we are so grateful to you for putting together this show, to Traylon and Broadway On Demand for making it happen and for making this pre-show happen. Thank you so much. And now we're actually going to take a look at another amazing performance from last year. This is the moment when the gods expect me to beg for help. But I won't even try. I want nothing in the world but myself to protect me. And I won't lie down, roll over and die. All I have to do is forget how much I love him. All I have to do is put my longing to one side. Tell myself that love's an ever-changing situation. Passion would have cooled and all the magic would have died. How fantastic is that? Keely is so great. It feels like only yesterday. I mean, Akile, of course, won last year's Best Performance in a Musical by an Actress last year at the Roger Reese Awards. So well-deserved for her performance from Aida. And I just, I love watching students be incredible. She was amazing. She was just amazing. Whatever happened to her? (laughs) I mean, we're going to talk to her later, so we'll find out how her past year has been. I know. She's had a great year. She's had a great year. Truly. I'm so excited to have you here. Of course, you know, the person who was closest to Roger, um, who knows him best, not just from a talent perspective, yes, but of course, so personally, what does it mean to you to be able to commemorate him and his legacy with this award ceremony every single year? Well, I, I, it's it's astonishing. Roger, of course, would have been terribly embarrassed about it, but um, he was always so involved with uh, teaching and kids and passing along. You know, the theater is a lot of passing down from one generation to the other. It's not so much about, uh, what's that song from, uh, from um, Sunday in the Park with George, children and art, right? You know, there's this great chain in the theater because the theater is ephemeral. When it's over, it's over. There's no record of it uh, necessarily. Certainly when Roger was coming up, there was no video of performances. You know, you only were able to pass down what you'd learned from generation to the to generation to generation. Right. And came up in that. He was taught by great actors uh, and great uh, directors. And then he couldn't wait to take his place in that chain and pass things along. He did a lot of teaching in the course of his life. I just heard the other day from uh, someone who was a student of his at Columbia back um, 30 something years ago, <clears throat> when he was here in New York doing uh, Nicholas Nickleby, he was teaching on his day off at Columbia. And uh, someone, a, a student of his who has gone on to become a Tony Award winning director uh, and, uh, and, uh, and producer, um, uh, said the greatest thing about the greatest thing about Roger was that the stuff that he said in that acting class, this guy still thinks of today. I think we forget. It's very easy to think of <laughs> high school or educational moments in theater as very separate from the professionals, and really, it all funnels in. Everybody has to come from somewhere. Yeah. And I'm wondering, as a writer and as a mentor yourself. 
um, what advice you have for these students and what advice you have for people watching students in terms of how we can support them. Well, you know, there are people who think the arts are sort of fancy, ex an extra thrill mm. um, and not terribly important. Uh, I think they're wrong. Uh, I think the arts are what survive. They're what describe who we are and what we are and where we've been and where we're going. And this is true for thousands of years. You wanna know what life was like in ancient Greece? There are plays that tell you. You wanna know what life was like when Shakespeare was alive? There are plays that tell you. You wanna know what epidemics were like or pandemics were like when Shakespeare was alive? There are plays to tell you that too. And nowadays, there, uh, our theater is um, is our is who we are. It's our it's our sociology. So um, I think it's I think it's short sighted of people to think that the arts don't matter or they're they're something extra. I think they're fundamental, and um, and we all understand that, which is why we're here. Um, certainly, Roger understood that, um, and uh, and I and certainly all the kids who are who are participating in the awards this year understand that. Um, I guess I guess their parents do too. I hope they do. I know that it was important for me that you know I felt I had a breakthrough with my parents when I finally said, "Look, I I don't want to be a you know a lawyer or a doctor or a you know yeah. a, you know I want to I want to do this. This is what I want to do." And for a while they were very resistant, and then I just um, uh, I didn't back down, and I I'm sort of this kind of person who always backs down, but I didn't back down. Uh, and they came around and uh, and became you know great cheerleaders. And then of course a few years after that they met Raj and and uh, uh, it seemed as though um, their support was rewarded just because I had I ended up leading a happy art art focused life. There's a difference between an idea and an activity. An activity, let's say if you're in a play, is learning the lines, but it's not the idea. The idea is. What, how do you actually approach a role? The, I, the and, and any role that you play in our society, whether it's somebody who um, does physical work or um, plants bulbs in Central Park or, um, or teaches kids or uh, is a sanitation engineer or somebody who's on the front line in, in hospitals, um, every one of those people understands the difference between an idea and the activity then that comes from the having of the idea. But the right. arts, stimulate that process of first having the idea, understanding what it is you want to do, and then figuring out a way to go about um, achieving it. That yeah. is the great thing that the arts do. That's why this is so much more than just a talent show. Uh, and, and that's why I, I think it's so great that, uh, that uh, it's, it goes on year after year. Absolutely. Well, I couldn't put that any better. So we will leave you with that. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. For, Thank you. For allowing us to champion Roger in this way. And it's always good to see you. Um, now we are going to see some more student performers that the Roger Reese Award so proudly champions each year. Take a look. Just fantastic. I'm so thrilled to be joined here by Craig Corsi, who is um, manager of One Schubert Alley and Theater Circle, those staple stores in the heart of the theater district, as well as our fantastic trio of kids from Mrs. Doubtfire the Musical. Hi, Annalise, Avery, and Jake. Hi. Hi. Great to <laughs> see you guys. So, I mean, what is it like for you guys to be in this dramatic pause right now? How are you staying in touch with your castmates and with each other? It's been really, really crazy, but I have to say for me, it's been very rewarding in a way. I've 
I had just moved into my first apartment right before the show started. And I have learned now that I really wasn't taking care of myself as well as I should have been. So this time has been really great for me to just take a little bit of a mind check and reevaluate the way I will take care of myself in the future when we do go back. Absolutely. And so many of these Roger Reese performers are hoping to be in your shoes. Avery and Jake, what's your best advice, even being younger than they are, of, you know, keeping up with the rest of the cast and really leading a show? Well, um, I would just say, like, you know, just keep trying because, like, the first audition, you're not just going to get it. It's, it, it, it. it's hard. Like, you have to just keep trying. If you get a no, you just you have to wait for the yes. You have to believe in yourself. Um, and just and just try and put out your best audition. If you leave an audition knowing that you did the best you could have done, that's the best. That's the best it could be. Is knowing that you did the best, and the rest is just we'll see. Let the chips <laughs> fall where they may. What about you, Avery? What do you think? My um, what I would say to other kids is uh, dream big, work hard, and stay humble. <laughs> that's amazing advice. It's good advice I for everybody. Oh, that advice. Yeah. Um, this year's Roger Reese Awards nominees are opening up with the song As Long As There Is Love, which is, of course, from Mrs. Doubtfire. What is it like to think about, you know, you guys were in the building process of that song, and now it's solidified and other people are already singing it. What is that like for you? What was the evolution of that song? Maybe we'll go in backwards this time. Avery, you start first with how did the song used to be and, and where it's come to now? Well, I think the song is very, it's a good song for right now because right now everything's happening like this, but it's a really good song because it's about love and they're all different types of families. So it's just a very good song right now. Yeah. Jake, what about you about the evolution of the song and how now it's, you know, the sheet music is in? Well, like that was the first group song that all of us rehearsed together. And when I first heard it, I was like, this this message is incredible. Like it was like, it, um, it was the first group song we ever rehearsed. And now seeing like, like, the Broadway community and people singing it like at award shows is incredible. And Craig, you of course are so used to seeing fans and you know young fans the same age as Avery, Jake, and Annalise. What has it been like for you to be able to support the Roger Reese Awards in this way while you don't necessarily have people coming into the store? Well, you know, I ran across a, a Edward Albee quote the other day, um, he said, the thing that makes a creative person is to be creative, and that's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't be creative in one way, you are creative in another. And so we've gotten together some pals and I to create some products that deal with topics that are happening now. I know. Uh, I'm so excited about these shirts. Tell us, yeah. tell us about the new shirts that we've got. Well, there'll be lots of them, but currently we have three. Uh, one says dramatic pause. Well, oh, there they are. Look, There's isn't that fantastic? Here. Places, please, and artists in residence. And we are all artists in residence right now. And everybody can get those t-shirts at stagepresence.com, right? At stagepresence.com, exactly. P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, -E -E presence. Right, presence as in gift. So Absolutely. I want all for being here and the clock is ticking down on time so <laughs> okay. so much we're going to catch a glimpse of how the roger reese awards were captured off stage last year Well, I love seeing the paparazzi come out for some students. And now we get you guys here, Christine Riley and Christine Nich Nicholas. Welcome to our red carpet broadcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us. 
Absolutely. Um, Christine, I'm going to have to use both of your last names now. Christine Nicholas is, of course, the director of the Broadway Association, which supports all of the businesses surrounding Broadway in the theater district and beyond. And uh, Christine Riley is the musical director at Marymount Manhattan College. So the next step of education. Um, Christine Riley, I'm, I'm curious from you, um, what is it like to take the high school students who come into your program and continue to call them into the artists and and continue the education that their arts uh, professionals have begun with them since they were younger. I mean, it's a really wonderful process. I'm lucky enough that I teach freshmen and seniors at Marymount, so I really get to see them at the very beginning when they first come in, and they're so eager and so hungry um, for all of everything theater and just everything education, honestly. Um, and then, you know, I get to watch that process go from freshman year to senior year and then senior year that they're really ready for the industry. We're so lucky to be in New York um, and, and very connected to what's happening around us, although we're scattered now, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, but we're still doing it. You know, we worked a lot on self tapes this year. We worked on um, representing yourself digitally in, in all ways. And so I think it's really good learning experience for us as faculty, as well as for our students. And so much of that, um, what I learned this year, we brought to the Roger Rees when we were working on creating the Roger Rees digitally for the first time this year. Wow. And Christine Nicholas, when you hear about this robust um, application, the numbers, but also the process and knowing that there is so much enthusiasm and love surrounding the theater from this group. How does that impact what you do with businesses surrounding Broadway? Well, it gives me tremendous hope for the future. And right now when we're part, you know, we're probably in our darkest hour here in New York in the Broadway community, just hearing about what went into this particular broadcast, this particular um, award show, everything that they're doing from the selection to the rehearsals, um, to the kids still having that passion to um, to perform at home. It's not easy, it's not, you know, with all the distractions. So it gives me tremendous hope. And, and I will say that, you know, working in the Broadway community, there are tens of thousands of jobs that support Broadway. Mm -hmm. So you, even if you're not on the stage or backstage or, you know, connected to a particular show, there's so much to do. and to be connected to Broadway. So to me, you're all winners. Um, I just think it's fantastic that you've gotten this far and I'm looking forward to seeing you, seeing the show, but also in the future for your contribution to Broadway. And I do wanna mention, cause you asked before, the two winners of the Roger Reese Awards, which will be announced soon, um, will be getting uh, full tuition waivers to Marymount Manhattan College's summer program. So we have a summer musical theater program that this summer um, is going to be online. We're gonna be digital this summer. But as we've said, I think there are so many wonderful things happening in this format. Um, I'm really excited for us to do it um, in a new and different exciting way. And hopefully our two winners um, will be able to join us this summer. Completely agree. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. In the spirit of that, we are going to watch yet another exciting clip from the 2019 Roger Reese Awards. Thanks, Ruthie. It's easy. It's easy. All I have to do is pretend I never knew him on those very rare occasions when he steals into my heart. Better to have lost him when the ties were barely binding. Better the contempt of the familiar cannot start. It's easy. It's easy. Until I think about him as he was when I last touched him. And how he Holy smokes, I'm going to have to compose myself for a minute, Akele, after that performance. Wow, wow, wow. How 
were you able to access that emotion? I don't know. Like, have you had that experience before? Where was that coming from? <laughs> a lot of practice. I put a lot of practice into it. Incredible. Well, welcome to you and welcome to Bonita. So excited Aww. to have you here. Of course, Bonita is on Broadway as mm -hmm. Shenzi in The Lion King. Yes. And you sang from Aida, which is another brilliant Disney show. We're so happy that Disney Theatrical continues to work in conjunction with the Roger Reese Awards to make this program happen. What was it like, Akele, to know that you have Disney's support behind the award that you ended up winning last year? It was amazing. The whole week of the Jimmy Awards for me was an amazing and thrilling experience. I am wondering what you would say, you know, the Jimmy Awards are a little bit different this year, but what your advice or um, just general insight to the Jimmy Awards for other students who will end up there in the future. Yes, I advise all teachers from across the country to put their high school students in the Jimmy Awards because it is a way to refine students and prepare them for the real world in Broadway. So speaking of which, what has your last year been like since winning the Roger Reese Awards and going on to the Jimmys? Yes, the week of the Jimmy Awards consisted of various components from the medley group, from master classes, from dance numbers. And although the process wasn't a thrilling experience for me, it was very, it was a learning experience as well. And what was the Roger Reese process, you know, leading up to the Jimmys? Like, tell us a little bit about what that program feels like from the inside. It was amazing to meet all the students from all the schools of the greater New York region. And I had the opportunity to work with the choreographers, the leader of the group, and just two days we had for the Roger Reese Awards. But in those two days, there were so many things that were being done. Um, and I didn't want to leave. It was part of it. It was like a family experience. So I really enjoyed it. Amazing. And Bonita, watching these students perform and i mean you saw that performance from akele last year yes are it you was just, amazing are you just blown away that that performers of this age and this quite honestly it's not so much about age but really like the stage of life they're in are able to put forth such powerful work absolutely when i was when i was in high school i wasn't thinking thinking about uh Kayla, you are such a powerhouse. I saw you on Kelly and Ryan, and I was completely blown. I was like, oh my goodness. I am I wasn't thinking about uh being a powerhouse in the 11th or 12th grade. Yeah. Honestly, yes. So I'm really blown away by the amount of talent that these and the effort that these kids um put into the arts. Uh, I think arts and education is so important. Um, it helps it helps you find yourself. Mm -hmm. And we are so blessed to have both of your talents in the realm, in the world. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. We cannot wait to see you, Bonita, back on stage in The Lion King. I yes. cannot wait to see what comes <laughs> for you next. But I think it's time for the main event. Are you guys ready? Oh, my gosh. So ready. So yes. thank you so much to both of you, to all of our previous guests, to everyone watching at home. Do not forget that you can donate to the Roger Reese Awards and this amazing program for education at the Broadway Education Alliance, BEAlliance.org. For now, I'm Ruthie Fierberg on behalf of the Broadway Education Alliance and Broadway On Demand. Enjoy the 2020 Roger Reese Awards.